All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dawon. Question comes to me. I'm just checking. We're here getting some gas. Checking through the emails, and the question comes to me and says, Pastor Dow, what is the best um, fighting discipline that I should look into and to have? First of all, I don't think people really, truly get my messages. I really, truly don't think that they understand, comprehend what I'm saying when I'm talking about defending yourself. Um, the ideal is if you see that you have to fight an aggressive person, um, your first and greatest option is to run away. I don't care how big and small they are, is to get away from them. Um, it's there, as long as they're not holding you um, or have you on the ground, you can run away. That's the best way. Um, now, mind you, if you can't run away and you are engaged and a person is punching on you, now you need to learn. And you, matter of fact, you need to know something. That's where this comes into play right here. Um, a lot of jujitsu uh, comes into play a lot. And of course, jujitsu, uh, as well as other disciplines, is there to keep those who are willing to attack you or actually away from you, off of you to get up and to be able to get away from them. However, if you can't get away from these people, um, you've got a few things you have to consider. And which I don't think that many of you have the switch that you could flip to do that. I don't think many of you know how to become violent enough, violent enough, or aggressive enough. And I really truly don't think that you have the heart and the stomach um, to be able to take someone's life if necessary, especially if they're doing you harm or your loved ones harm. So you got a lot to think about there. Um, and it's just not, you know, everybody, there's a bunch of tough guys out here. Uh, everybody's a tough guy. I mean, they all are tough guys. I've met, I can't tell you how many tough guys uh, before. I remember one time when I was in um, downtown Paris um, and, and we was there and and of course, I was young at the time, and we, me and my buddies was drinking on the bus. And this guy all of a sudden took it up on himself, said he's gonna come down and whoop all our tails. So everybody was quiet. And I looked around, and I said, "You can't be talking to me. I'm talking to you." Rah, 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 rah. Next stop, next stop. I said, "Ah right, man, shut up. You ain't gonna do nothing. You'll see. Next stop, next stop." So what happened? Well, anyway, got out. Next stop. Sure enough, um, he's out there acting a monkey. Took my coat off, went outside. As soon as I stepped outside that bus and right out the door, that man come running at me and swung at me. Well, because I know how to box, I ducked him. And of course, man, I, I hit him with a left hook and a right cross out of this world. Uh, blood went flying everywhere. I needed to say, he shut his mouth for the rest of the trip. Now, that time I couldn't run. Um, we were on a... Uh, kind of like, uh, you know, one of these paid military type vacation trips and stuff. But the whole idea is that you got to get your mind right. And the reason why the first greatest option of fighting is running is because when you fight someone or if you're engaged to fight someone, you don't never know what they may have. You don't know if they have a knife. You don't have a gun. You don't know if they have three or four friends waiting off in the wings with um, uh, bats and pipes uh, monkey wrenches. You just don't know. That's the reason why you need to always have your peripheral vision when you feel like that a threat is in front of you. Engage. And you must always look at your corners. Always. You must be aware of your surroundings. Now, let's go over this real quick and let's end this video so we can get on back to our leisurely ride up the road because all of us are still tired from the Passover. Um, Rule number one, if they don't have their hands on you and if they're um, a good distance from you and all it is is just a bunch of hollering and screaming, run. Get out of the way. Get out of the area. Get out of the hill. In other words, live to fight another day if you have to. Uh, number two, if they do have you in a hold and you're not familiar with grappling or anything like that, you need to always be armed and have something on you 
to where you can be able to eliminate a threat. And when I say eliminate a threat, I remember what I talked about earlier. I don't believe that many of you are violent enough or aggressive enough that you can actually flip a switch and then actually go from calm, cool, collective, Sally Joe or whatever is into a Wolverine. If you can't do that, then uh, you shouldn't even be in the fight in the first place. You shouldn't even be in a place where you even have to get in one. Uh, but you need to learn some type of discipline, and that starts right here. Um, number three, again, and, and I want to try to, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible because I'm speaking to a diverse audience out there. There's a bunch of bad people. I met a bunch of bad people. I really have met a lot of bad people. And when I smacked them in the mouth, they wasn't too bad. Uh, but they were bad. They were bad. And I didn't smack them in the mouth because I was trying to be bad. I was trying to keep them from being bad to somebody else. Um, I lost my train of thought. Here. So number one, run away. Number two, be aggressive if you can. Um, and number three, you always be aware of your surroundings. Um, because again, like I said before, I don't think that many of you have the heart to be able to eliminate somebody a threat. Uh, but you want to be aware of your surroundings. Now, remember a few videos ago, I gave you some wisdom about upgrades. And you say, what is an upgrade, Pastor? Well, an upgrade is this. Anytime if you are in an area and you know you have to fight someone or you're possibly gonna get into a fight, everything around you and your surroundings is an upgrade. Be it a lamp, uh, a rock, a brick, a stick. You see, that's why I keep trying to tell you. See, most of you, you grew up in the neighborhood Somebody put a stick on you, you knock it off, and then y'all start fist fighting and stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the best fighter in the world is a dirty fighter. The dirty fighter always wins. And there are no rules. You're not inside of an octagon. You're not inside of a boxing ring. And you don't have a referee over there telling you that you're breaking the rules. All right? Let's finish off from some of the, of the most vulnerable areas of the body it could be attacked. The eyes, the throat, the groin. And if you have objects on you, um, you can go to the eyes. Uh, you can even take your fingers and put somebody's eyes out if necessary. But you have to remember this, that if you make this choice and decision in the heat of a moment, you're going to have to live with that choice for the rest of your life. So there's a lot to think about when you're assessing a situation. If you can get away, run. All right? But upgrades, upgrade, upgrades, digress again. Anything you get your hands on, anything you could possibly see in that area to upgrade. One rule of thumb is, is you're definitely in a state in an area where you can actually carry a gun, carry a gun. If you can't carry a gun, carry a knife. Can't carry a knife, um, I, I said it before too. Try to get you a good tactical pen. Pen is made out of titanium and stuff where you can grab it like this. You can go straight for the neck. Now, all this is violent information. It really truly is. And we're living in a time now that when people want to do you physical bodily harm, they mean business. They mean to hurt you. You need to be aware. Get your mind to the point that no matter where you're at, you are aware of your surroundings. Because all it takes is just for a thief one time or somebody want to do you harm to catch you when you least expect it when you're in the public. I'll give an example. All right, one more example, okay? When I go out to meetings and stuff, all right, it's not that I'm trying to um, be pessimistic. Do y'all know the reason why the Secret Service, um, a lot of times police all, but the Secret Service, whenever they're guarding a the dignitary, wear glasses, especially the mirror kind. Well, when they're standing next to whatever, whoever that dignitary or that authority is, anybody that walks up to them, the first thing that they're doing is they're watching that person's hands. Not only is just one person, but there's three or four of these people that are designated to protect this person, and they're watching, and they are profiling every single person that comes up in front of that person. They're watching their hands, they're watching their body language and their posture way before they even get there. That's the heightened sense of security right there. Why? Because the idea of that person is, is when they get close to the dignitary, get close to someone important, is that they want to be able to start working them like a sewing machine with a knife. All right? So 
they are making sure that they do their due diligence to check people out prior to them getting up there. And even when they're getting up there, they still are close enough by that it can be able to grab them and neutralize the attack. I hope you said something. I'm a little bit tired. Next time I try to clean it up a little bit more. But anyway, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Hope I gave you something to help you out.